tonight and uh, taking a few minutes out of your day to share with us and feel free to participate either through the chat or if anybody would like to give a testimony I want to open that up for you as well I can uh, open up your audio and video at any time so uh, feel free to share that's what this is all about you know we're moving into uh, no more one-man show so you know I always encourage people to participate and uh, so uh, feel free to do so so just kill a little time for people to get online here tonight we're going to talk about answering the accuser of the brethren dealing with that in the courts of heaven uh, uh, as our plaintiff uh, against us and we're the defendant in, in the courtrooms of heaven so we're going to talk about uh, a scriptural basis for a lot of that uh, that happens for all the people that like to have a scriptural background I am going to be writing a book on the scriptural uh, 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 basis or background uh, or guidelines for operating in the courtrooms of heaven I hope to have that out before too long uh, with all the stuff that's going on travel ministry the webinars it's a little bit difficult to find time to do that but but uh, making plans to do that and the grace is there to do it so so I need to jump in and do that so you guys pray for me we'll get that done get it out it's going to be a small book it's not going to cost very much but uh, you know I just want to get uh, get that out there for people to see how much scripture uh, or how much the courtrooms of heaven are referenced actually in the scripture and so when when I begin to read scriptures and and uh, with a thought of courtrooms heaven uh, in mind, I began to see all these scriptures that were speaking legal language, that were speaking about the courtrooms of heaven. Doesn't it actually say courtrooms of heaven in the word, but you can see if you've read and studied yourself that you'll find tons of languages or, or scriptures referencing uh, courts uh, language. So uh, uh, answering the accuser of the brethren, we'll just jump right in for you. Uh, uh, there's a couple of scriptures in the Old and New Testament that I want to share with you that says basically the same thing about Satan. In Job 1, uh, 7, it says, And the Lord said to Satan, From where did you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. So he's, he's looking for evidence to be used in the courtroom of heaven. But it goes just a little bit farther in 1 Peter 5, 8. And the word says, be sober, be, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And so if he can't devour you on the spot, he's going to find every legal uh, right that he has, either in your life through sin or the bloodline iniquities, uh, sins of your forefathers. And so... Uh, it even gets a little more serious in the in the New Testament, and so uh, uh, we have to be diligent and uh, and be sober uh, to recognize uh, the the assignments of the enemy. What he's really doing is he's seeking evidence to use in the courtrooms of heaven against us. You know, and uh, uh, Robert Henderson says in his books or or. In legal uh, attorneys I've talked to, the the uh, courts can only use evidence uh, that is presented to them. And so, you know, um, not only on the plaintiff sides, he's he's got uh, uh, generation upon generation of generation of legal legal rights that he has to use against you in the courtroom of heaven. But our our legal team has has uh, has uh, a lot of testimonies that. That they use on our behalf. We'll get into more of the our legal team uh, and who that is and what we're talking about there. But uh, it even goes on to say in Luke 22, 31 through 32, and the Lord says, Simon, Simon, indeed Peter uh, has desired you that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail, and when you have returned to me, strengthen uh, strengthen your brethren. Uh, Robert Henderson said in his video with, with uh, Sid Roth, he said, that word desired, Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has desired you, means demanded for trial. The root of that word demanded means 
or, or desired means demanded you for trial. So when I saw that, I meant, oh my gosh, you know, that's pretty, pretty uh, uh, severe uh, things that are going on there. And what happened was Peter didn't show up in court that day, so he was allowed to, to uh, sift him like we, and we all know what happened. He totally denied uh, Christ. And so, uh, but it goes on to say in the word, in verse 32, but I pray for you that your faith should not fail. And so even though uh, Simon Peter didn't answer or didn't come into the court, uh, uh, the Lord prayed for him that his faith should not fail. And when he returned to him, uh, he would go on to fulfill destiny. He would strengthen his brother. And so uh, God has our best uh, uh, in mind. He has a uh, desire to uh, be with us to fulfill our destiny. But the legal rights uh, that Satan has gained against us uh, are there that we need to deal with it. So we're learning how to do that in the courtroom with heaven. I think this is a, a significant day for this because it's a national day of prayer. And I put a post on Facebook a little while ago that said uh, when the church gets the, in general, gets the revelation of the power and the authority we have in the courtrooms of heaven, uh, think how powerful it would be when we come on a national day of operating in the courtrooms of heaven, that we know how to remove every legal right. Now, prayer is good, but, but we're not dealing with the, the legal rights Satan has gained through our, the sins of the nation, the sins of... Uh, the people of this uh, nation, sins of the world. And so how powerful would it be when we come into the revelation of, of operating in the courtrooms of heaven that we can have a national day of prayer that would, would uh, come up to a higher, more effective way of operating that we can see uh, a, a, a whole nation or a whole world come into the revelation and operating in the courtrooms of heaven and think what would happen if, if that uh, came to pass. You know, I know, you know, we can pray for that and legislate that on the earth. I'm praying that the church gets the revelation, and I think they will. We've been forerunning the realm. Me and several others have been forerunning the revelation of the courtroom of heaven. So I believe at some point in time, I hope we can accelerate that, that the church gets the revelation of operating in the courtroom of heaven. Uh, so uh, let's look at Joshua, the high priest, and uh, Zechariah 3, 1 through 7. Uh, the word says, Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. And the Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. Uh, the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? Now Joshua was clothed with filthy garments and was standing before the angel. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And, and to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. In other words, he's coming, and Joshua is coming in. Uh, he's cleansed from his, his sin and stained his garments. And so... Uh, God removed that iniquity from him and clothed him in holiness, righteousness, and purity in the courtroom of heaven. And so uh, uh, it goes on to say, and I said, let them put a clean turban on his head. So they put a clean turban on his head, on the, and they put the clothes on him, and the angel of the Lord stood by. Then the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, if you will walk in my ways, and if you will keep my command, then you shall also judge my house and likewise have charge of my courts. And I will give you places to walk among these who stand here. I always wondered about that last part. It says, I will give you places to walk among these who stand here. I think that gives us such a level of authority uh, on the earth that we're, we're seated in, 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 uh, as a legislative being. Uh, in Christ Jesus at the right hand of the Father, and we can legislate from heaven to earth instead of pleading and begging uh, with God from the earth. Uh, we're, we're seated there. We're given places to walk among these who stand here because 
uh, we, we've come to the place of righteousness, holiness, and purity in our walk with the Lord. And so uh, pretty amazing to me uh, that if we will walk in his ways and, uh, and if you will keep his command, then we'll also judge his house and likewise have charge of my course. Well, his house is us. Uh, we are the temple of God. So we are his house, not only his house, but, but his church. We'll also judge the nations uh, uh, as well and likewise have charge in my courts, capital M, in my court. So we move uh, to a place of authority, uh, uh, legislation in the various courts of heaven. Some of you may have had experiences in the higher courts of heaven. Uh, so far, we're dealing with just a mobile court that deals with our own uh, personal lives, our families, and the ones we love. So, uh, you know, we also deal with our businesses, our ministries there. And so, but we, as we gain authority and experience in the courtrooms of heaven, we were able to uh, have charge of his courts, a greater, greater courts for different purposes, uh, the court of kings, court of scribes, court of angels, uh, council uh, of 70, galactic council, and so forth and so on. So uh, pretty fascinating that we gain experience. And many of you may have, have been in some of the other courts as well. I've been in a couple. Uh, and I'm beginning to learn uh, or just go by faith and begin to step into those because there's some signs and, and dreams and things that have been happening, prophetic words that are indicating that I've been given authority over a larger territory like California uh, uh, and other courtroom uh, uh, that I can come into, that, that I can begin to legislate uh, in those courtrooms. So well, I just don't step into uh, a court that I don't have authority in or don't have experience in unless he calls me in by faith. But I, I want to see uh, uh, the signs and the wonders and the, uh, the approval of God before I begin to legislate in those courts. So I think that makes sense. I'm not just going to step in foolishly and, uh, and uh, suffer some consequences that may not be good. Uh, in Revelation 12, 10, 11, the Lord says, Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast out, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. So in one sense that says, the accuser of the brethren was in heaven, but he's been cast down. So where does he, where does he, where does he operate in accusing the brethren now? Uh, so Mike Parsons and some of the other people, even Clayton, talk about the mobile court, uh, referencing Ezekiel, the wheels within the wheels where they touch earth. Um, that's where revelation has been given to those guys that. Uh, uh, where Satan is able to come against us and accuse the brethren uh, day and night. So he's there accusing us day and night, night after night, day after day. And so uh, if he has legal right to use against us, he's going to do everything he can to steal, kill, and destroy uh, as, until we come to the place where we, we come before uh, uh, the throne boldly and we begin to legislate and remove every legal right that Satan has had against us. So uh, let's begin to do that, and let's begin to step into those things. That, and, uh, you know, I, my, my goal is to, to train up people that know how to operate in the courtroom of heaven so you can go in and equip others, uh, train others, release others in this, teach others, and you'll be, you'll be to the place where we can have this whole uh, world. Uh, you know, I've got a big vision. Let's uh, let's infiltrate the world with this revelation. Let's teach the world. Let's let's get out of pleading and begging with God and come to the place where we legislate as a uh, as a uh, as God intended us to do. And so, what we do is simply we step into the courtrooms of heaven by faith, uh, the mobile court by faith, and then we, uh, you know, in most court cases, the plaintiff goes first, who is the accuser of the brethren. What we do is we, uh, we uh, simply listen uh, to the accuser, all the accusations, the lies, and the curses that have been legally uh, uh, given him uh, through our sin and our iniquities, 
And then we simply agree with our adversary quickly, like Matthew 5, 25 says. Uh, it says, agree with your adversary quickly while you are on the way with him, or let's just say, in court with him. Lest your adversary deliver you to the judge, and the judge hand you over to the officer, and you be thrown into prison. And just uh, as I'm reading this, how many of us are, are literally in prison, and we don't even know it? You know, so uh, we haven't agreed with our adversary quickly. We, we justified and tried to reason our way out. That wasn't me, but he may have had, you may have uh, purified your life. You may have repented of all your personal sins, but what about the, the iniquities of your, uh, your fathers all the way back to Adam? So agree with your adversary quickly while you're in court, lest your adversary deliver you to the judge, and the judge hand you over to the officer, and you'd be thrown into prison. So, uh, you know, I, I found it interesting, too, in Proverbs 26, too. It says, like a flitting sparrow, like a flying swallow, so a curse without a cause shall not alight. Uh, so uh, if there's no curse, uh, you should be mani manifesting heaven on earth. Uh, all the blessings of the Lord, should be, the inheritance of the Lord should be poured out. Uh, so why is it not why is it not happening? So probably there's a curse in our life somewhere in our generational line or through our personal sin. Now, last week, I think I read uh, Psalm 49, where it says, uh, uh, Our sins hide his face from him, and our iniquities cause him to not hear us. So uh, really, we're just, we're just uh, uh, flailing arms going through the motions if we haven't dealt with our own sins. So... Uh, uh, Dealing with those sins, in Psalm 139, 23 through 24, the word says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. And see if there is any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Now, we need to allow God to search our hearts. And I think Mike Parsons said uh, in one of his blogs or supernatural mentoring videos, he said, we need to sit under the judgment seat of the Lord and allow him to cleanse each or open each one of the 21 gates of our spirit, our soul, and our body. If you, have a, if you don't have that, uh, that uh, uh, chart from Mike Parsons, I showed it last week, I think, but uh, you can find that on, uh, on Mike Parsons' uh, blog as well. But search me, O oh God, and know my heart. You know, try me, test me. Find out, I want to find out where... where uh, Satan has the legal right in my life and in my in, uh, generational bloodline to steal, kill, and destroy. I don't know about you, but I want heaven manifesting on earth. I want to walk in fullness of, of joy and peace. I want to walk in prosperity. I want to walk in the transference of the wealth of the wicked so I can build his kingdom um, on this earth. I want to see the, the kingdoms of this uh, world converted and become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And so, uh, uh, I want to do my part uh, to make that happen. I want to have God just search me and know my heart. I want to know my heart. And I want to know those things uh, uh, that are hindering me from fulfilling uh, that, uh, that mandate or the inheritance of the Lord. Uh, Isaiah 50, here it is where I was, I was talking about Isaiah 59. 1 through 2 says, Surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear, meaning he wants to save us, he wants to bless us, he, he wants to hear our prayers, but your iniquities or your generational bloodline sins have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. And so, uh, isn't that amazing? Uh, you know, when I start seeing stuff like that, I want to have God uh, 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 search me. I want to have God, I want to know my heart, what's in my heart, what evil thing is in my heart, and so that I can be free. Uh, Philippians 2, 5 through 11 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. I think I see 
as I watch Facebook, I see a lot of people uh, not willing to, you know, the word says, uh, if you'll lose your life for my sake, you'll find it. Uh, if you struggle to save your life, you lose it. You know, I've been prophesying for a long time. And the last five years have been the most difficult time of our life. Maybe some a little bit longer, maybe some a little bit shorter, but it's been really, really difficult. Uh, so number one, we need to humble ourselves and become obedient to the point of death uh, uh, and make ourselves of no reputation so, so that if you see me, you see the Father. You know, and if you... Uh, we want to walk in holiness and purity without uh, any uh, uh, darkness in our heart. So allow Jesus, or the Lord, to, to examine your heart, to test your heart, to weigh your heart, and let the mind, which is also in Christ Jesus, be, be, be in you. Uh, let's read the rest of that. Verse 9 in Philippians 2, 5 to 11 says, Therefore God also has highly exalted him, so through that humbling process and the point of death, no reputation, dying to this, dying to that. Uh, some of you know my experience in Death Valley uh, where I went through an encounter with God where I had to die to literally everything. This process, this scripture was happening in me and an encounter with God in Death Valley of all places. So uh, therefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of those in heaven and those on earth, and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord, to the glory of our Father. So once you're humbled, uh, he'll exalt you and uh, raise you up uh, to be a demonstration and a manifestation uh, of Jesus Christ, revelation of Jesus Christ, and the manifestation that you would be able to bring of heaven on earth. Matthew 18, 18 says, Verily I say unto you, Whosoever or whatsoever you should bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now I believe what I've used that, what the church has used that scripture, binding and loosing is, is uh, 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 keys to the kingdom. Uh, but did you ever hear Jesus say, I bind you? I don't think I ever, ever heard that. Or I lose you. Uh, it's it's meaning is something totally different. I'm gonna do some searching on these scriptures and uh, give a little more background on that. But Robert Henderson and others say that those are legal terms. Well, where you use much the same as a, a, a insurance binder. Uh, they're legal terms. You bind a contract or you lose a contract that's made against you. So consider that in a different way. I think what we're seeing nowadays. Uh, in this time and season is uh, opening our eyes, God opening our eyes to understand differently uh, from the way we've already uh, understand it for years and years. So we're going to, through answering our accuser, agreeing with our accuser, uh, uh, we're going to repent of our sin and we're going to close the uh, doors open through sin in the courtroom's heaven. How do we do that? Uh, uh, in, let's see, Isaiah 43, 25 through 28, uh, the Lord says, I, excuse me, even I am, am he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Put me in remembrance, or, or in other words, uh, uh, bringing him to remembrance of the sins you've committed in the courtroom of heaven by agreeing with your adversary quickly, confessing and repenting of your sin in the courtroom of heaven. Let us contend together. State your case that you may be acquitted. That's courtroom language right there if there's any at all. Verse 26, I'll read it again. Isaiah 43, 25 through 28. Put me in remembrance. Let us contend together. State your case that you may be acquitted. And so, what verse 27 says, your first father sinned. Now, who is your first father? Uh, it's probably Adam. That's why we don't go just back three and four generations. We go, the word in this scripture says, your first father sinned, and your mediators have transgressed against me. Didn't go back, didn't stay going back third, three and four generations. So we go back all the way to Adam. Therefore, I will 
profane the princes of the sanctuary, I will give Jacob to the curse and Israel to reproach him. And so uh, that's the reason that you guys are, have struggled with why why uh, go beyond back to, to Adam and not just three or four generations. Well, that thing perpetuates itself as uh, the generation goes. If you go back four generations, then the third generation is in the same sin. The second generation is the same th sin. It just perpetuates uh, uh, farther and deeper. And so uh, it kind of has an essence of not going away until we repent. And so we deal with that in the courtrooms of heaven. Let's see. Nehemiah 1, 5 through 7 says, Nehemiah 1, 5 through 7, And I said, I pray, Lord God of heaven, O great and awesome God, you who keep your covenant and mercy with those who love you and observe your commandments. So he keeps his covenant with us once we repent of our sin. And mercy, he, 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 mercy triumphs over judgment, right? So uh, he would rather see us repent and so that he can, and, uh, uh, bless us and fulfill his destiny for us uh, once we give him the legal right to step back in and uh, and bless us. Uh, please let your ear be attentive and your eyes open that you may hear the prayer of your servant which I pray before you now day and night for the children of Israel your servants and confess the sins of the children of Israel which we have sinned against you both my father's house and I have sinned. So they're going in that, in verse 16, they're going, or excuse me, verse 6, uh, they're confessing the sins of the children of Israel, uh, which have sinned against him, uh, both uh, of my own father's house, uh, both my father's house and I have sinned. So uh, they're recognizing in this scripture uh, the father's sins, the, the iniquities of the generations, plus your own sins. And, you know, one thing is really to be open with the Lord when you're in, in the courtroom of heaven. Uh, you know, the spiritual realm, the Father is, 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 knows what's going on in your life. And he knows the sins that are, that are holding you back. And so just be honest with the Lord. And sometimes it's a little difficult to do that in a, uh, in a uh, uh, group of people that are uh, participating in a, in a corporate uh, courtroom that have a litigation, but you know, uh, it'll set you free when you start confessing those sins. You're bold about it. You want freedom. Don't hold anything back. Just go after it. God will, God will bless you. Uh, verse 7 in that in, in Nehemiah says, We have acted very corruptly against you, and have not kept your commandments, the statutes, nor the ordinance which you have commanded your servant Moses. And so we need to deal with all those. Uh, sins and iniquities when we're there in the courtroom with them. And I think it's important, you know, one, one, uh, one sin can open up revelation of another one. But as I mentioned last week, follow the Holy Spirit uh, in your courtroom case. The Holy Spirit is your counselor and he reveals all truth. So what that means to me is that he will be your counselor and he'll guide you, he's your teacher, and he'll teach you everything you need uh, the, for that particular case, every sin that need, that's, uh, that's withholding that particular mandate uh, from being answered and, and blessed uh, from the Lord. So, uh, you know, don't just go, you can spend hours and hours and hours dealing with every sin and iniquity all the way back to Adam, but only follow the Holy Spirit. What he reveals is pertinent to your case. And so what we need to come to the place as, John 14 30 uh, says I will no longer talk much with you for the ruler of this world is coming and he has nothing in me so we need to have a place uh, we need to come to the place where, where Satan has nothing in you where Satan has nothing in me and think how wonderful our life would be there'd be no sickness no disease no poverty no lack no oppression, no no frustration. It'd be, it'd be heaven on earth if Satan has nothing in you and nothing in me. So uh, uh, 
there, there's more in that, but I want to move on into our legal team and the voices in the courtroom of heaven uh, that are there with us. I also consider these these uh, 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 people and entities, I guess you would call them, uh, as part of our ministry team as well. When, when I minister, uh, since I've had revelation of this scripture, Hebrews 12, uh, 22 through 24, I engage all these uh, voices uh, when I minister, the, and I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, Hebrews 12, 22 through 24 says, uh, But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and the church of the firstborn who are registered in heaven, to God the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect, to Jesus the mediator of a new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Now, I've added a few more uh, the revelation of the Lord to include the seven spirits of God, to include the Holy Spirit in that, and we'll share all of that. But our job is to understand and agree uh, and come into unity with our, uh, the voices in the course or our legal team that, who are testifying on our behalf so that we'll, we'll uh, uh, gain the answers and God will render the verdicts that we've been seeking uh, on our behalf uh, for what we mandated uh, to go in the courts for. So as we join with the voices, testify on our behalf, God, we release our faith and come into agreement with them. We engage them. Uh, God's kingdom will be on the earth. It's free to be accomplished once we once we have what we move. See, we move them to uh, the defendants or our side of the case where we begin to hear the voices in the courts of all these these uh, uh, voices that speak on our behalf or testify on our, on our behalf. Robert Henderson says here that any lack of kingdom being manifest is because of a legal issue. If there is a lack of manifestation of kingdom purpose, it is because we have yet to grant the Father the legal right to fulfill his passion toward us. If we are praying according to, to the will of the Father uh, and, and for an extended time without results, uh, something legal is standing in the way of the answer. Somewhere in the spirit realm, the demonic powers have found, found the legal right to resist the answer from coming to us. The answer to this is to learn and agree with the voices in the courtroom of heaven. The accusers uh, silence and we set in motion uh, heaven to be manifest on the earth. So what are these voices? Let's do a quick find Yes. Okay, the voice of the beloved Jesus. The voice of Jesus releases testimony before the throne of God that allows the Lord to legally fulfill his passion and uh, for us, our destiny, our inheritance. Uh, uh, so that's what the voice of the testifiers on our behalf. What is the voice of the blood speaking when we engage the courtroom of heaven? We need, to, we need to tap in and find out what the voice of the blood of Jesus has testified on our behalf. The mediator of a new covenant. covenant. Mediators are officers of a legal system sent to resolve a conflict. So we need, need to engage a mediator. Now that would be Jesus, our advocate, our attorney, however you want to uh, 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 naming in that uh, courtroom session. The spirit of just men made perfect. Uh, that's the uh, men in white linen or the cloud of witnesses. Speaks of those who are a part of the church who have died and are in heaven. They still have a viable interest, a uh, viable interest and necessary function in the courts of heaven. If you look in the last chapter of Hebrews 11, it says, uh, them without us who are not made perfect. So they have a vested interest in wanting to uh, uh, wanting God to fulfill uh, uh, his passion towards us and his, our destiny. So they want to participate. The cloud of witnesses are surrounding. Another version I think it was uh, Mirror Bible says the cloud of witnesses are encircled around us. And so we need to engage them. 
And uh, how many of you in your courtroom session uh, 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 or your daily life has, has been sensitive to engaging the cloud of witnesses? Who's stepping out of the cloud of witnesses? Who's, who's partnering with me on earth to fulfill uh, whatever I'm doing or to fulfill, uh, bring the verdict rendered in the courtrooms of heaven on our behalf? So they're going to testify on our behalf. So I'm always sensitive who's stepping out, uh, what's their name, and why are they here? Not just I see somebody from the cloud of witnesses or I see angels. I want to know what, what their name is and why they're here. God the judge of all. Um, God is revealed as, as, we know him as the father, we know him as friend, but he, uh, he's the judge in this scripture. It's because the Holy Spirit desires us to recognize the legal position God holds as the judge of all. And I hope I can find, um, you know, let's say this, uh, God will not violate his position as judge to be a father. Does that make sense? God will not violate his position as a father, a judge to be a father. So if there's a legal right that he says in his word uh, uh, that is, has come against us, has a legal right against us, he'll not violate uh, his his right to be a father until we remove that uh, legal right that has been grand, gained against us. And so uh, we're learning a whole new way, a higher, more effective way to operate than we ever had before. And so um, let's see. Oh, I'm finishing the. Uh, hang on a second. So, uh, the church of the firstborn, registered in heaven. Uh, I like that word there. What I, what the uh, Lord revealed to me, registered in heaven. Some of the word, uh, other ver versions of the word have different words there. But registered in heaven is, to, to me, one, a, a church that has been registered to conduct legal activity. In other words, you can have a fellowship that is just designed around relational uh, being relational with others and building maybe pastoring uh, and shepherding the flock, uh, but they may not be registered in heaven to conduct legal business or courtroom of heaven activity that can change the earth. So everything I do, I want to be focused around. Uh, I know my ministry, we're registered in heaven uh, because he's commissioned us to do it. Dream after dream after dream of courtroom activity. Uh, my uh, uh, Commission to begin to teach and train on the courtrooms of heaven is part of that, and so uh, I know that that uh, uh, we're we're able to do that because we've been commissioned to do that. The general assembly, assembly, excuse me. The word in the Greek is universal companionship, and it speaks of the multitudes worshiping the Lord about His throne. Their function of worship is essential to the operation of the court. So, what is the what is the court in heaven uh, worship? The word says there's one church in heaven and on earth. And so we need to be in sync when we jump into or engage the courtrooms of heaven. We need to be in sync with what uh, the heavenly, uh, uh, what they're doing before the throne, what they're singing, what they're worshiping. And many of us don't even think and consider that. A lot of times I feel like we, we were so zealous to enter into the courtroom of heaven we many times just go by ourselves, and we don't engage uh, these entities, uh, and we miss a very viable, very important part of the courtroom litigation that we need to get in, uh, verdicts rendered from heaven and our answers manifest on earth. An innumerable company of angels. There are varying ranks of angels that are part of the court of heaven. We'll get into that later. The city of the living God, heavenly Jerusalem. This is actually the wife of the, of the lamb, as mentioned in the book of Revelation, the wife or bride of the lamb, the horse, has a tremendous impact in the courtroom's path. The voice of finance, we'll get into this more later, our giving of finances has a uh, great weight and authority when they come into agreement with heaven's desire and intent. Uh, I don't remember where it is exactly, but the word says here, it's in the New Testament, uh, maybe we'll hit it later, but we'll, the word says, here we give to men on earth 
there we get uh, in heaven to testify that the Lord lives and he uh, says something about that he is, uh, uh, is faithful in granting us our inheritance. So our finances that we give, uh, when we attach a declaration to our, our finances or a purpose to our finances, that purpose, that declaration is recorded in heaven and it becomes a testimony that we can use uh, in the courtrooms of heaven on our behalf. When we learn, when we learn how to come into agreement with these voices, verdicts are rendered from the courts uh, as God's will is done in the earth. There's nothing that can be accomplished when we get legal things in place. That's what we're doing in the courts. Once the legal issues are resolved and the devil's rights revoked, God is free to functionally take back the planet through his church. So we want to become the church that's not pleading and begging with God. We want to be the church that is registered in heaven, that we begin to fill uh, the earth uh, with heaven and, uh, and uh, release the legal hold that Satan has had against us all these years. And let's move on to Isaiah 2, 1 through 4, is uh, the word that Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw uh, concerning Judah and Jerusalem. Now it shall come to pass in the latter day that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on top of the mountains. To me, that's talking about uh, Mount Zion, what we spoke of earlier, uh, the mountain of the Lord's house or place of authority where we operate from is established on top of the mountains, on top of, of the seven mountains that they are speaking about of society. So when we operate out of the Lord's house or out of the Lord's courtrooms of heaven, we have authority or, or uh, let me just back up just a minute. We may have been given uh, jurisdictional authority over the seven mountains of society. So we have to know our spirit, sphere of authority, our metron, and which mountain we're operating in that we have uh, been given uh, spiritual authority or jurisdictional authority to operate in. It uh, goes on to say, and shall be exalted above the hills and all the nations shall flow to it. How would it, awesome would it be if all the nations would flow to operate in the courtroom of heaven? Just the testimonies we've heard uh, in a couple of years have been really, really amazing. Many people shall come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of, of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways and we shall walk in his path. I like this one. For out of Zion shall go forth the law. So that's not talking about the law like the Ten Commandments law, Deuteronomy and things there. It's talking about us rewriting laws uh, to manifest heaven. Uh, uh, loosing contracts or laws that have been written against God's will and against God's plan uh, from the from Mount Zion or the courtrooms in our place of authority uh, shall go for new laws. In fact, we had one testimony. Uh, you may have heard it where where a woman and her husband were were battling with an ex who was receiving uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, uh, and it wasn't right. Uh, the the legal system in the earth said there would have to be a new law written uh, to overthrow the law that's in place. And they went to the courtrooms of heaven and got uh, averted. And the next thing they knew, uh, the attorney called them and said, you won't believe what happened. There's been a new law written uh, that that supersedes the law that this whole, uh, that, that, that enforces the money that has to be given to, to this person. So now you're free, you're set free because the law has been, a new law has been written. And so out of, Mount, out of Zion, uh, a new law has come forth. And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, he shall judge between the nations and rebuke many people. They shall beat their swords into the plowshares and their spirits into pruning uh, hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. So out of 
Mount Zion, out of our place of authority, out of operating in the courtrooms of heaven. We come to the place there's no more war, and we learn war no more. So amazing, amazing scriptures talking about the courtrooms of heaven. Uh, Psalm 110, 1-2, we talked about this last time. Uh, the Lord said to my Lord, uh, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool. The Lord shall send the rod of strength out of Zion. Rule in the midst of your enemies. So whose responsibility is it to make his enemies uh, his footstool? It's ours. We remove the legal right and put Satan where he rightfully belongs, under our feet, uh, uh, the footstool of the Lord. And so where he has no right place to, to operate any longer. All right, let's talk about uh, the righteous judge of all. That's God our Father, God our judge. Uh, Hebrews 12, 23, uh, to the general assembly, assembly again in the church of the firstborn, um, who are registered in heaven, to God the judge of all, to the spirits of just men made perfect. So God is, is our judge. You know, just to thinking about all the judgmental people, the gloom and doom people, I kind of, kind of uh, uh, think they might have got their prophecies wrong uh, based on traditional mindsets. And I believe what God really wants to do is, is come to Him as, as Judge of all, that we, we are uh, come to Him like, like Joshua was. He, he was cleansed in the court from the heaven, gave God the legal right to come in and grant his inheritance. God gave God back the legal right to bless him and to bless us when we, we sit under the judgment seat of the Lord. So, so uh, you know, just, I don't know if you're the same way, but I just cringe when I heard hear those gloom and doom prophecies. I think I eliminated most of the people on my Facebook page because I just don't want to hear that. You know, I know bad things are going to come, bad things are going to happen, but, but uh, you know, I believe once we get this revelation uh, and flowing and, and operating as one in the courtroom of heaven, uh, that those things are the legal rights of those things have been stripped away uh, and removed legally in the courtroom of heaven, so they won't happen. And so, uh, uh, you know, to those people, they're, they're, there's no answer. You know, I look at some of the prophecies like, well, he's given us the call of Jeremiah to root out, overthrow, uh, to to uproot and destroy, but he's also given us a commission to build and to plant. So when I see those things, that they don't have something in there that builds and plants, I totally ignore it because all they want to say is gloom and doom. There's no answer. We're going, you know, the world is going to hell and we, there's nothing we can do about it. God has a part in this where we build and plant as we co-labor with God, partner with Him, and co-create heaven on earth uh, as He intended us uh, to do. Uh, let's see. Uh, Psalm 9, uh, 4. For you have maintained my right and my cause. You say on the throne, judging in righteousness. So, uh, I think that's pretty powerful. You have maintained my right and my cause uh, on the throne judging in righteousness. And so when we, we, we come to the throne of grace, we come to the throne of the courtroom of heaven, God will maintain our right and his cause uh, uh, to bless us. Uh, Revelation 19.11. We mentioned this in the early part. Uh, very powerfully about God. Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. The part I, I may not have shared was the, the progress in this. First he judges, then he makes war. And a lot of times in our intercession and our prayers, we go straight to the war part. We go straight to the battlefield. Or the courtrooms of heaven, we come off the battlefield and we don't enter back into the battlefield to make war once we have the verdict or until we have the verdict from heaven. So we want to war, 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 and we're warring on his terms. We haven't removed the legal right. He has to steal, kill, and destroy. So nothing changes. And so 
we need to come to the place where he judges in righteousness. He judges in our favor. He blesses us, removes every every uh, uh, legal right Satan has had against us through our repentance. And then when we step back into the battlefield and make war, we have the power of us being cleansed. Uh, we've repented of all our sins and generational iniquities. Then when we come back in, into the battlefield, we war with the declarations of the verdicts rendered in heaven. And so it's much more powerful uh, when those legal rights that Satan has gained against us are totally removed. Uh, Psalm 7, verse 11. God is, is a just judge, and God is angry with the wicked every day. So, so he's, he's, he's uh, righteous, he's just in removing. His heart is to remove all the sins so he can legally move in and, and bless us, bless his sons, bless his daughters. Uh, Psalm 9, 4, for you have maintained my right and my cause. You sat on the throne judging in righteousness. So he always judges in righteous, righteousness. What is right? What is good? Uh, he's faithful and true uh, to maintain what is right and maintain his cause in our life. Isaiah 33, 22, for the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. He will save us. And I like that. His heart is to save us. His heart is to release mercy. His heart is for us to come and partner with him uh, that, that, uh, to judge our, 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 our legal rights that Satan has against us and to release new laws, release uh, uh, legal uh, verdicts that will remove Satan's legal right, that will grant him back the legal right to to move on our behalf on the earth. Uh, Psalm 74, 21 through 22 says, Let not the oppressed return dishonored. Let the afflicted and needy praise your name. Arise, O God, and plead your own cause. So the Lord that, and plead your own cause, why is calculated, uh, capitalized in, uh, in that verse. So, he will plead his cause, his own cause, or case against, uh, for us. So, pretty awesome things that the Lord God Almighty does on our behalf. And if you haven't realized yet, the, the courts of heaven are highly stacked in favor of us. We have a, a legal courtroom or a court team uh, that has been around before the foundation of the world. Uh, has been around forever. And... Uh, so uh, they know all things, they've seen all things, they've heard all things. So when we engage with God, when we engage with Jesus, our mediator, uh, when we engage with the Holy Spirit, we have a legal team that's never lost a case. And so uh, uh, let's go to court and begin to engage uh, our legal team in a, in a more, uh, 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 more fully uh, so that we can give them uh, the right to, to grant his purpose and plans and the like. Let's talk about the testimony of Jesus. And I see we're at about, you know, I'll just take about an hour, most of these, but I won't we'll take all your night. Let's talk about the testimony of Jesus. Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and the blood of the sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Jesus <coughs> came uh, uh, speaking of new and better ways, a new covenant that he brought. So when we engage him in the, in the courtroom of heaven, he's going to release the new covenant blessings and promises in our life. He's going to write new laws. He's going to mediate and be our attorney, attorney to, to overthrow the plans of the enemy. He's in control in the courtroom of heaven on our behalf. Uh, and, you know, we don't need to fear Jesus because he's on our behalf. He's a part of our legal team. And we need to fully engage. Even if we're kind of a little timid about dealing with our own sins, God's going to reveal uh, those things to us through Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Uh, 1 Timothy 2.5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ. For there is one God and one advocate 
uh, between God and man, the man Jesus Christ. Amen. 1 John 2, 1 says, My little children, these things are right to you, said so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. So in that scripture, Jesus Christ is our advocate with the Father, with the, the righteous judge. Jesus is our advocate. So they're one, they're working as a team on our behalf. Uh, Hebrews 4, 15 through 16 says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly before the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Obtain mercy is a legal, uh, is legal language in the courtrooms of heaven. Uh, so we enter, we come boldly to the throne of grace, uh, which is the mobile court to find, uh, to obtain mercy and find grace to help, help us in the time of need. So Hebrews 8, 6, but now he has ordained a more excellent ministry inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant, covenant which was established on better promises. So again, Jesus is the mediator of a better covenant. Uh, Revelation 19.10, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I love this scripture because the testimony Jesus gives in the courtroom of heaven gives us a, a, a prophetic word, releases the spirit of prophecy. It gives us a prophetic word, a prophetic declaration uh, of the verdict and rendered in the courtrooms of heaven so that when we prophesy, we prophesy in power and authority, not just prophesy in words, because Jesus just gave that testimony in the courtroom of heaven. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So what we're doing in the, in the prophetic word, we're, we're prophesying the heart, mind, and will of the Father, not only to us or to the atmosphere, uh, to the heavens, and to the people in our family, the people in our, 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 our ministry, uh, whatever that mandate for going into courtroom of heaven, we begin to prophesy. We don't agree with the negative, but we begin to prophesy only what the testimony of Jesus was in the courts of heaven. So uh, that releases the power, that releases the manifestation. And so 2 Corinthians 13, uh, 1. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. Uh, shall be established. The mouth of two or three witnesses in the courtroom of heaven, uh, every word shall be established. Every, every promise, every uh, bit of our inheritance shall be established. And two or three witnesses uh, come together in the courtroom of heaven. But we've got more than that. Nine plus seven uh, uh, spirits of God uh, and Holy Spirit in the courtrooms of heaven. We've got more than two or three witnesses. We've got a whole bunch of witnesses on our behalf. So that the word or what is written in our life uh, before the world began can be established. Our inheritance can be released and we can walk in fullness of God's blessing. Uh, closing, let's do this, uh, Hebrews 7.25. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. So, uh, Jesus is always willing and able to participate with us in the courtroom of heaven. And so when we do that, we, uh, you know, I just feel we need to engage, uh, be careful to engage uh, uh, the, these entities uh, when we come into the courtroom of heaven and when we begin to prepare a case uh, for litigation uh, be a little more diligent in preparing our cases and uh, you know I want to hear testimonies from your victories in the courtrooms of heaven but I also uh, I don't want to see you enter into the courtroom of heaven I don't want to enter the courtroom of heaven and not get an answer and so there's been some things in my own life that, that I haven't got the answer yet. And I understand that sometimes times they take a little bit of a process to outwork the verdict rendered in the courtroom of heaven. Uh, but, but I want to see us all be more effective and more powerful in the courtrooms of heaven. 
So, uh, you know, I just want to say thank you for uh, watching tonight. And we'll go on, we'll continue, we'll do a part three where we'll go into a lot of uh, other, uh, the other uh, uh, team members, our legal team members, we'll, we'll talk about that. And we'll go into preparing and presenting our case and the outworking of that. We'll all base that on, on uh, biblical scriptures. And uh, we'll do that. So Jamie is asking, please restate where the 21 gates of our soul are. Let me find the picture. I think I've got it still up. So this, this is actually from uh, Mike Parsons and Ian Clayton. You see you got, uh, let me center it a little better. Out of the, uh, the yellow there is the uh, spirit, uh, the gate of first love uh, from the glory of God. Uh, you notice every, every, I've counted them, there's 21 gates here in our soul. Our, our our body, our soul, and our spirit, and uh, uh, you know, so we need to begin to to instead of being affected from uh, the five senses realm, where a lot of most everything goes in this way, and we're affected, we make all our decisions from there. You know, we need to begin to reverse that. And out of the out of the glory of God, out of the gate of first love, uh, everything is changed and reordered. Uh, out of that, so it affects our the spiritual divine uh, uh, order. Is spirit, soul, body, not body, soul, spirit, or or soul, body, spirit? You know, a lot of times we said. Well, my spirit resides in my belly or somewhere in my heart or when we reduced it to something very, very small. For God's divine order is spirit, soul, body, where we, and all those get gates, all those are gateways that we need to have cleansed that, well, you know, like this one, emotions, or our choices, or our free will, you know, all has to line up with, with God's will. Uh, and imagination, you know, how about that one? The church said, ignore your imagination or your conscience, you know, and we've shut that down or allowed some other demonic entity to, to operate at one of those gates, a reason, you know, and uh, so all those things can uh, need to be opened, all those gates need to be cleansed so that we can. Uh, Operate as God in, intended us to operate. Uh, intuition, revelation, worship, faith, reverence. I had to deal with that one. And so uh, uh, you can get that from uh, Robert Henderson and uh, I think Ian Clayton. They both share that. And so there you go. That's the 21 gates. And so uh, just. Uh, Know that I love you, and uh, you know I hope to see some awesome, awesome testimonies. You guys uh, winning cases in the courtroom with Alan. Share them on Facebook. Share them with me, uh, so we can share with others, encourage others. Testimonies are powerful, and so we want to do that as much as possible and help others along. And I just want to say, any of you guys that are uh, participating on the courtroom with Alan. I'm getting so busy now that it's hard to answer a lot of the things. So jump in and help others. Uh, what you learned here and what you learned on your own. Uh, uh, it's just impossible for me to answer every every post. And, and that's why I don't a lot of times because uh, I want others to participate. This, this isn't the Terry Spencer show. It's us helping others, helping train and equip others, releasing them into destiny and helping them through their problem areas to get verdict training in the courtroom of heaven. So thank you for helping on there and thank you for joining us tonight. And we'll be back on Tuesday night with Ecclesia Online. A lot of things shaping up and developing there and uh, we'll share more with you what's going on with the Ecclesia. And uh, just a quick update there. Uh, the Ecclesia 
uh, was the word uh, uh, church was was used instead of ecclesia in the world, and Constantine kind of messed things up and changed things, and the world came into the church. But what uh, the ecclesia really is, beyond called out ones, is a legislative and judicial uh, gathering of uh, sons and daughters. So uh, uh, God is is uh, awakening his sons and daughters to become legislative beings on the earth so that we are the ones that partner with God to, to release heaven from earth, uh, deliver his people from captivity and bondage, and deliver creation from the bondage of corruption. So there we are. The ecclesia is arising uh, in power and authority, uh, and we're moving into a place of, uh, beyond just having a church uh, and, and a few people being uh, holding the power. We all have power. We all have the, author uh, the authority to operate in an ecclesia. We all have a, a, a voice. We all have a, a ministry. And so let's move on in by faith, step in there and get some things done. And so God bless you guys. Thank you so much for joining tonight. And we'll see you Tuesday night. And I'm looking forward to this weekend. Starting tomorrow, Dr. O and my buddy Ian Johnson are in Venice Beach. So I'm going to be at that Friday and Saturday. And I'll be loaded for, for the weekend. And so bless you guys. We'll see you next time. Thank you, thank you for joining. And uh, join us, join us, join us Tuesday night. God bless you guys. Good night.